This is a $400 beginner sim racing cockpit and this is a $900 professional sim racing cockpit designed for serious sim racers. At well over double the cost, how do these compare to each other and is the next level racing GT track really worth the $500 difference? Let's find out. Before we get started, here's a few important things you should know. If you're interested in learning more about either of these cockpits, I've made separate, more in-depth reviews on them both, and a link to those can be found in the video description. As for this video, it will be more of a comparison more than anything else, and for the simplicity of it, I'll split it up into six main parts. The seat and its comfort, the sturdiness, the adjustability, the compatibility, the design, and finally my final thoughts and recommendation. So as always, sit back, grab a snack, and let's get into it. The GT Track and the Open Wheeler both have a bucket racing seat, but that's just about the only similarity between them. The seat in the GT Track is made out of synthetic leather, whereas the Open Wheeler seat is made out of fabric. Since it is made out of fabric, it's also available in a bunch of colors. I went with the red one, but it's also available in blue, green, orange, yellow, and all black, whereas the GT Track only comes in this one color. In terms of the dimensions of the seat, they're both fairly similar and well suited for nearly everyone, but if you are of the larger type, the GT Track will definitely be better suited for you as it is wider. Just by taking a look at both seats, it's fairly obvious that the GT Track is of much higher quality, and it really is. It's a lot more ergonomically designed, whereas the open wheeler is a lot more flat and doesn't adjust nearly as well on my back. The GT Track comes standard with a very high quality racing harness, whereas the open wheeler doesn't. However, the open wheeler cockpit does offer a bunch of accessories also separately, such as the lumbar and neck support pillows I have here, a racing harness, and even a seat riser. Again, all of these are sold separately, and the lumbar and neck support pillows I have on mine are not included, but I will admit that they are sold at a very fair price. Finally, in terms of comfort, the absolute, no questions asked, clear winner for me is the GT Track. Its ergonomic design, higher seating position, and higher quality material used allows me to spend hours on end without a problem. Although most reviews on Amazon regarding the open wheeler's comfort are very high, I just can't say the same. Since the first day I used it, I had to almost immediately find a pillow to use as a lumbar support, and I couldn't spend more than even half an hour without my back aching. The lumbar and neck support pillows have made a huge difference, but even then, my back would still begin to hurt at around the 1 hour mark. Due to the soft fabric and cushioning material used in this seat, it did not retain my posture at an optimal seating position and after a while my back began to give up. So it might just be that I have a bad sitting posture and that the open wheeler seat enforces it, whereas the more ergonomic seat in the GT Track forces me to sit up straight. To clarify, a lot of the reviews and people I've spoken to who own the open wheeler cockpit say good things regarding its comfort, but I honestly just can't say the same. Both the GT Track and the Open Wheeler are sturdy cockpits that will be able to accommodate most gear without even breaking a sweat. With that being said, however, the design and more reinforced build of the GT Track makes it far superior and will allow it to withstand the forces of direct drive wheels, whereas the Open Wheeler will not be able to do so. However, the Open Wheeler is very sturdy and although it cannot support direct drive wheels, it will be able to support nearly everything else and do a surprisingly good job at it too. I used my Thrustmaster TSXW on it, which is by no means a light wheelbase and it did a fantastic job in maintaining it firmly in place. It also managed to hold up my Thrustmaster Sparkle handbrake, which is a very heavy piece of gear, and it did it with relative ease. So while the GT Track is the clear winner in this category, the open wheeler puts up a very good fight here, especially accounting for the design and price. Both of these cockpits are adjustable in nearly any way you could imagine. In both of them, you can adjust the seat forward and backward, bring it up against the steering wheel or all the way back for stargazing. You can adjust the distance of the pedal tray and the height of the steering wheel, among other things. The main difference I noticed, however, was that in the GT Track, you can adjust the pivot of the pedal tray, whereas in the open wheeler, you can't. However, in the open wheeler, you can adjust the height of the shifter arm, whereas in the GT Track, you can't. Some other things to note, the shifter arm can be mounted in either the left or the right hand side of both of these cockpits, and the open wheeler adjusts by loosening and tightening these rubber knobs, whereas the GT Track uses bolts. In essence, both of these cockpits are extremely adjustable to the point where it will suit nearly anyone, so there isn't necessarily a clear winner here. In terms of what gear and accessories can be used with these cockpits, there are some significant distinctions. Let's start with the open wheeler. This cockpit will hold nearly all mass-market sim racing wheels and pedals, with the exception of direct drive wheels. 
Moving on to the GT Track, it's compatible with pretty much anything you could imagine. Its sturdy build allows you to use the direct drive wheels without a problem, and it also includes a dedicated butt kicker mounting solution, which makes use of all its potential. Furthermore, the GT Track is compatible with next level racing's motion platforms, which although I've never used, I can only imagine how cool it would be. The GT Track's larger mounting plate will also allow for more versatility in the gear you can use. Finally, its steering plate will also allow you to mount stream decks, button boxes, and all that cool stuff to further up the immersion. Although the open wheeler is compatible with pretty much all mass market gear, the GT Track really takes it up to the next level. Boy, if you don't get Probably the biggest difference between the two is the design and build of both cockpits. I mean, just looking at them, you can tell which one is superior here. The main difference is clearly the full frame build of the GT Track versus the one center pole connecting everything in the open wheeler. For those of you wondering if the pole between your legs gets in the way, it does to an extent. For me, it was never critical to the point where it was unplayable, but I always knew it was there and occasionally my knee bumped into it when heel towing and stuff like that. So jumping into a cockpit without it, it was definitely a huge improvement and in all honesty, I plan on never going back. From a designer's perspective, the GT Track clearly looks so much cooler than the somewhat kid-like look of the open wheeler. Some things to note however, due to the more advanced design of the GT Track, it also took me a lot longer to put together, around 2-3 hours, whereas the open wheeler only took me about 20 minutes. Although both of these cockpits are definitely large, the open wheeler is better suited for smaller spaces with its smaller overall build. Finally, the GT Track is finished in an all matte black color, whereas the open wheeler has a two tone finish due to having some exposed metal. As you would imagine, the next level racing GT Track is clearly the superior cockpit here, but that's like comparing a Ferrari to a Fiat. Obviously, you would expect the more expensive option to be superior. The real question comes down to, is the GT Track worth $500 more than the open wheeler? And the answer you're all gonna hate me for is that it depends. It depends on what you want to get out of sim racing. If you're looking for a cockpit to occasionally play on and don't want to invest a significant amount of money into it, the open wheeler is a solid option. But if you're looking to really get serious about sim racing and get out everything this hobby has to offer, the GT Track is the far better option due to what it allows you to do. Now in my honest opinion, is it worth $500 more? Absolutely. My back doesn't hurt, I prefer the higher seating position, it makes my setup look so much more cool and professional, it gives me the option to one day upgrade to direct drive wheelbases and motion platforms, and it doesn't waste any of my butt kicker's potential, and most importantly, it gets rid of the god awful pull in the middle of my legs. Let me know what you guys all think in the comments, do you think the GT Track is worth more than double the open wheeler cockpit? As a final note before any of you guys go complaining in the comment section, I know this video is kind of stupid, but it seemed like a good idea when I started, and then at around the halfway mark of writing the script, I started realizing it was a dumb comparison, but I had already invested too much into it and didn't want to scrap it all. So yeah. Anyways, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.